welcome to another version of the Antique Trader. And we're here at the Crafteeks Mall in San Antonio, Texas. And we're taping out of the Garden Tea Lounge. And my guest here today is Marianne Torres. And she was a school teacher previously. She's going to talk about that in two minutes. But we're going to do a program on featherweight sewing machines. Marianne, welcome to the program. And I'm glad you're here. Tell us, uh, from teaching, mm -hmm. what led you into this? Tell us a little bit about your teaching background. Oh, well, uh, thinking about what I wanted to share with you today is about my little hobbies. Um, teaching was uh, one of my um, uh, careers. I've been retired now for about eight years. And now I'm able to get back into one of my little hobbies in sewing. And I'd like to just share uh, my little uh, Singer sewing machine featherweight with you. And so what, what was your hobby while you were teaching? Did you sew a lot for uh, the kids to show them things or no. class projects or anything like that? No, my little muse, if I could use that word, was having tea parties with the children. Uh, when I was allowed to, uh, it was just uh, uh, some way for me to teach them a little etiquette, bring out my little tea sets, and uh, have fun with the kids. And uh, I feel that I'm looking forward to grandchildren and being able to continue working with children in that way. Is that something that they enjoyed uh, having tea? What did you have set up for them and everything else? Well. I would have to say I had about 24 children, boys and girls, second graders and third graders. Um, I would first set up the table as a surprise for them, uh, and it would be a long U-shape table. Uh, it was in a U-shape uh, setting, and because I wanted all the children to, to experience together, uh, you know, what we were going to do with uh, with tea. And they were all surprised. The little boys were a little bit more uh, shy about it, um, had not been exposed to too much before. Um, but they did wonderfully. Um, and I would have little tea sets for every single child. Uh, I would have to show them how to hold the little tea cup and how to sip from it. Um, that was kind of the beginning for me with tea and okay so how did you get into your hobby did you entirely retire or did you come from work from working with the kids to sewing well I've always sewn I have always sewn uh, as a young girl 15 years old I was in high school um, I would sew before I did my homework I would wear a little a-line dress that I would sew Every day I wore something new and learned that from my mother, from my aunt, my grandmother. Uh, it was simple sewing, but it did uh, fit my needs. It was important for me to have a little new dress every day. I would even cut patterns out, multiple patterns. I'd just lay the same pattern on several uh, pieces of material. Pe pieces of material get the scissors and I cut out the same pattern. Very easy. I had it down real well. It became two 15-minute dresses. <laughs> yes. Putting in zippers and um, the, little, the arms, you know, the, the sleeves, the little sleeves. Uh, back, back in the 60s, you know, we wore little A-line dresses. Very simple. So did I. You did too. <laughs> yes. I, and I think they're coming back too. Little and they were so great because uh, during my summers off, uh -huh. this is what I would do unless I would go someplace. Uh -huh. I would stay home and I'd look forward to sewing all my dresses and everything else. And remember they used to have the bags in the 60s uh -huh. with the fringe, yeah. wood stock type of thing. Uh -huh. Well, I would sew my bags for school to match my clothes and uh -huh. I'd get all prepared and every single day for 300 whatever days, mm -hmm. I would have one individual thing to wear. There you go. 
and you must have experienced the same thing. Tell I us did. about your featherweight machine here. <clears throat> well, let's see. I think now it's about 1970. I'm married, 20 years old. I got married. Um, and um, since I like sewing, I saw this at a flea market. This little machine is a Singer uh, featherweight machine. It comes in its little case to carry around. Um, <clears throat> so in the research that I've done, the black um, Singer sewing machine featherweight was first produced in 1933. There were four manufacturers. One was in Scotland, one was in New Jersey, one was in Canada. Let me think where the other one is. I'll have to get back to you on the fourth oh. one. <laughs> but, but this particular one has a serial number. So they all had a serial number. I was able to find the year that this particular one was uh, manufactured. Oh, I'm excited. Tell me, what yes, year was it? 1954. This one is from 1954. They stopped producing them in black, which you see with the, the little gold motif right here, mm -hmm. um, in 1961. So after 1961, they started producing them in white or beige. And you might find others in the paper, uh, in a magazine. So this right here that we're looking at is a 1954 original? Original, oh yes, original. This one was manufactured in New Jersey. Um, so I, you can find all that on the, on the web, which is so nice. All these attachments that are right here, um, they show you how to use them on the, on, on, uh, the web. And I have not used them. I, I just did my front and back stitches. Um, didn't use any of the attachments that are right there. Um, but I'm going to now. This gonna, is um, uh, the a serger. No, no, it's 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 made to um, when you, when you pleat something to make pleats. Yes, but I'm not the ruching. Okay, it's made for ruching. And let me see if I can tell what this one is. This one is for. No, this is not. This is a zipper foot. No, this is the one that you do the binding at the edge with. Well, I haven't tried any of those. My grandmother was a designer, oh. and so was my mother. So oh, oh. I could tell you, I did a lot of sewing, and oh. they ripped up a lot of my zippers. Oh. So this this doesn't look like a zipper foot. I, the zipper foot. This one might be the zipper foot on here already. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. That is the zipper foot. Mm -hmm. I can't see with all my glasses. Oh, okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, but that's a zipper foot there, because uh -huh. I know, and I know how to graduate the tension on these. Yes, that's Because important. they run just like the big Singer sewing machines that my grandmother had and mm -hmm. my mother had. Mm -hmm. My mother had a pretty professional one mm -hmm. that comes with that big table, mm -hmm. and my grandmother had, she had one that ran with the spindle mm -hmm. on the foot. Yes. But that's a lot of work on your ankle. I tried that, oh, and I wasn't too happy with that after a while. Uh -huh. But the others uh, were electric, and they were like this. But mm -hmm. they were a little bit larger, mm -hmm. and you carry them the one with the big cases. But were those considered featherweights, even though they had their case? I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know. This mm -hmm. is the first that I've seen this tiny like this, and your seams in mint condition. Have you taken it in for repair or anything? Uh, I did at one time just to, to replace the belt on it. it. It originally had a leather belt on it, and you know, they, they tend to, I mean, it's The what? belt should be very easy to replace. Yes. If you get the model of the machine and go into a Singer mm -hmm. sewing center, you should be able to Get what it, what it originally had? Yes, because uh -huh. the, the one of the things about uh -huh. these, the belts breaking off a lot. Yes, they do. And the one I have on there right now looks like a newer belt that I probably did have replaced, but not, I don't think it was a, the original. Well, when you type. had it replaced, you should have purchased two extra ones. Well, talking about purchasing two extra ones, I found another little machine just like this one and I purchased that one. So now we have two machines and 
because I just fell in love with the size and, and, and the work that it does. It looks like it sews amazingly. It does. I know this will be my next thing, hunting for one of these, because you're the second person that I have on this program. I had a lady that did quilting. Mm -hmm. Her name is Ellen Hernandez, and because of her, she inspired my curiosity for this. Mm -hmm. So you became passionate about your machine and now you're starting to collect them. I'm collecting them. I do sh let my sister use the other one. It comes in its own little case like this one. Is it and similar to this one at all? Yes. Uh, that one is a 1951 model. So when this one was manufactured and put out to the public, they only made 5,000. So it has a year, this, the birth date on this one was in April of uh, 54. So the, my sister's is from 1951, um, manufactured at a different time, uh, very similar. Uh, they do tend to change the little gold uh, markings on it uh, from year to year. Actually, th this, this particular black one, they kept it for about five years, looking the same. And then if you find other models, you know, say 1960, uh, uh, you might find a different type of uh, stenciling for the gold part on it. Um, let me see. Um, They're beautiful. And the, uh, as I've heard, the mm -hmm. ladies used to use them because they used to have tea parties. Yeah. And they used to get together to be able to sew their laces, their collars, their gifts. A lot of quilting was done on these. 20 or 30 ladies would get together all from the community or whatever. Mm -hmm. And one would cut patterns and they'd sew and they'd sip on tea. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, but this is amazing. I, I love mm -hmm. them and mm -hmm. I know I'm going to be looking for one if anybody's selling one out there. Okay. I very much would like to have one. And uh, now when we come back, we will be talking about teas and tea parties so don't go away we'll be right back back here at the Garden Tea Lounge and we were just discussing featherweight sewing machines and we decided that we wanted to have an afternoon tea so we could discuss the ritual or the cultural afternoon teas. I'm here with the manager Tammy Martinez from the Garden Tea Lounge here in San Antonio and my guest Marianne Torres and we're going to have a sip of tea and we're going to discuss uh, tea time. Hi. Okay, uh, who was going to tell me about what afternoon teas were all about and how they came about? Well, I can mention a little bit on Could that. You um, I'm, like I mentioned before, I'm a little novice on <laughs> tea. Uh, I don't know all the history of tea. Um, I can I've, help a little bit. So. All right, and what I did read recently out of some little magazines that I received called Tea Time. I love these magazines. They're uh, just full of a lot of information for people like me and and just they're, they're just a joy to be reading. Um, but I did read that tea was served because there were there really wasn't uh, activities to do like back in the 1700s, 1800s say in Britain uh, Europe areas um, that uh, tea was served as an activity. It was served uh, and coffee was also served but mainly tea. So that's pretty much what I know. Like I mentioned, I'm just starting out doing my research, reading about tea. 
Um, do you have something that you might mm, add sure. to that? Well, in 1840s, you got the seventh Duchess of Bedford. Um, during this time, they did not really have like a lunch time. They had so they had their morning meal and they had their dinner meal. So dinner was about eight o'clock. So that's a long stretch between mm -hmm. breakfast and dinner. Mm -hmm. So the Duchess always wanted something a little, she got hungry around four o'clock, you know, so she would have them to bring in some tea. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, a couple of little mm -hmm. tidbits, little sandwiches and things. So, um, so around four o'clock, that's what she would do. And then she started saying, well, you know what? I don't want to eat alone, but she was in her boudoir. So she said, let me invite some friends. So she'd invite some, her girlfriends over and they'd sit in, the, in her boudoir and, and have, uh, have tea with her. And so basically that's how afternoon tea got started. She kept that up and the other ladies kind of caught on. And so it moved from the boudoir to the drawing room and then it just became mm -hmm. a tradition of afternoon tea. Another thing, when ladies used to get together for quilting and would be sewing and mm -hmm. whatnot, they bring their sewing machines and whatever, and it would become a tea party. Okay. Yes. <laughs> they, they'd bring out their, their favorite whatever mm -hmm. to serve their tea in, and that's how the ladies would collect cups and saucers, one of a kind, unusual mm -hmm. kinds. Mm -hmm. And it seems it's become a real tradition mm -hmm. to go over there and have tea parties for the children mm -hmm. at their birthday parties. Because mm -hmm. that seems to be very popular nowadays. I know I grew up with tea drinkers, and I love espresso coffee in the morning. But usually in the afternoon, it's either iced tea or a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Never with milk, cream, or anything mm -hmm. else. I just like mm -hmm. nothing else. But I had an experience here on taping my first program that I was hoarse, I was sick, I couldn't speak. And they kept giving me tea with honey uh -huh. and tea with lemon. <laughs> Tammy bought me a cup. The owner, Liz, here bought me a cup. Uh, my son bought me a cup of tea with honey, and everything was fine. I said, well, I'm going to go home and rest and whatever. I went to bed early. Five o'clock in the morning, it was like, yay, everybody line up. <laughs> I was ready to party. Then I realized, I says, I am drunk on honey. Mm -hmm. And now I know how the bears feel. That's why after they have honey or whatever, they're all, yay, let me climb up the tree. <laughs> Nobody will catch me. And if you come to catch me, I'll swipe you. Get away from my honey. Right. Yes. But that's why it's all about the tea. Not all about the sweetener and the tea. Yeah. <laughs> that's no, and that, that was quite an experience for me because I never thought that Never gave it a second thought that you could get actually drunk on honey. Well, you know, you can actually get drunk on tea. There is a, there is a, is there is a tea drunk. Oh. Yes, there is. There, what is that tree that they use in Ayurveda that, that is one of those that gives you a high? I forgot the name of it. You should. Are you talking about mate? I believe Yerba so. Yerba mate is in a, a tea, a, well, it's actually it's herbal. Um, it's not from, made from the tea leaf, so um, it has coke in it, and so that's how they get the workers to work. You know, drink your mate. That's <laughs> but that's a oh, 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 oh. I, haven't, I haven't read that in any of these it's, yet. Yeah, it's but. probably not going to be in those. But that's indigenous to Argentina, so. Mm -hmm. mate, oh, okay, but mate. mate is spelled. How do you spell mate? M a t e. It looks like mate, but it's mate. Mm. M a t e. Oh, because mate is kill in Spanish. Okay. So it's a killer tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That's so, a good way to put but it. But anyway, so how do we come down to tea time? How has it diminished or has it increased in popularity? It really has. I mean, we have we do so many tea parties here. Just a lot of tea parties. I mean, at least several a month. And I think that the ladies just really like the daintiness of it. They enjoy the tea cups and saucers of, you know, we just use yeah. different kinds. And uh, they just love the little petite things. So I think we just kind of like it. I, I think it's wonderful. Take a look at these, uh, these little dainty things that we're going yeah. to be touching and whatever. I mean, yeah. it's beautiful. 
And I, mean, I think it's just reminiscent of our childhood. And it's like mm -hmm. you said, I mean, because growing up, I had tea parties. Me and my siblings were 10 years, me and my sister are 10 years apart. So she did not want to have tea parties with me. So I had tea parties with my dolls, you mm -hmm. know, my dollies and my, my bears. And um, I just always wished I had, you know, other little ones around me to, to enjoy my tea parties. And so now as an adult, uh, mm -hmm. I pour that passion into the tea parties that I do here. Well, when I visit with, uh, my father's Irish, mm -hmm. and when I visit with my, my father and I would visit with my mother, they would invite me for tea on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And it was a usual thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To have a piece of cake and some tea. Would you like some tea? Mm -hmm. Not coffee, but tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I miss that. And now when I get together with my daughter or my father or my son, says, can we share a cup of tea? And says, sure, why not? Yeah. Well, it's a socialization it, um, very. Uh, party almost. You know, you're conversing. We're having fun just being here right just now. Just having fun. Exactly. And, and, it's beautiful, you know, just to see the colors and the conversation. And what I think is picking up a lot now is uh, meeting ladies here at Craftiques mm -hmm. that, that have little socials at their home mm -hmm. because they're getting together to do crafts. Mm -hmm. Bring your sewing, bring your needle uh, point, bring your whatever you're working on, mm -hmm. and then we'll mm -hmm. have tea afterwards. So it, if it yes. had stopped for a while, yeah. It's starting up again. Well, I think yeah. here at the Garden Tea Lounge, uh, it's very encouraging because mm -hmm. I've seen ladies while I'm going through the booths and things like that. Mm -hmm. They'll sit here and knit and crochet. Mm -hmm. The crochet yeah, club comes the, here. Uh, right, the knitters. Mm -hmm. Yep, they mm -hmm. come here and they sit. And there's like three, four tables of them. And they're all there chatting, mm -hmm. sipping the tea and going yeah. at it. Yes, yeah. And there's a, there's a lot of that. We have a lot of meetup groups and they do. It's like you, you said, it's mm -hmm. very social. It's social. And, you know, it's what I we mean, need. Yes, yeah. women. Just to sit back and relax and mm -hmm. enjoy It's a beautiful atmosphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm enjoying this tremendously right now. Like this has been the it of my day. Oh, I'm loving it. <laughs> it's a good memory. You know, it's something good to put you to sleep at night thinking back on what you did during the day. That uh, is it's so just great. so pretty. Um, so um, I guess we're through and we're going to drink our tea right now and here's to you and I'd like to offer you some of my tea. Now don't forget to continue collecting and remember that history is in the heart of the collector and I'll see you on the next program. Thanks for watching. What a joy. <laughs> this is so nice. <laughs>